Well, it's finally happened, and I first of all want to thank everybody who has donated, in particular Jamie Haywood for donating my very first $10. Thank you, everybody, so much. Hello, and welcome to a crash course uh, of how to use Toon Boom Harmony 15, in this case. I'm just going to go through... Excuse me. I'm just going to go through all of the functions and um, just give you a rough idea of where everything is, how everything works within reason. I could go on and on and on. There's so many layers in this program, but I'll try and make it fun and relatively brief and so sort of prepare the ground for any beginner. All right. Now, when you first get this program, the layout of the windows won't quite look like this. It'll look a little bit different. So the way I've arrived at this kind of layout is by moving things around. So for example, I can move these pallets around by gripping hold of this bit and this bit and this bit. Oops, this bit is here as well. And I can move individual um, sort of pallets around, if you like, by grabbing hold of one tab and moving it here. So I could have it just floating around if I wanted to. Or I can move it to a grouping of t uh, pallets by sort of moving it over a, a tab. Um, now, reordering tabs is quite difficult. You have to move it out and then move it back again. There we go. So now it's in that order. Um, you can as well move tabs so that they're different sections, all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's all it's all fun. It's all good, clean, wholesome fun, I have to say. Now, here we have the um, stage, and I can move this around. And um, I'm using a, a, a magic trackpad to do this, but you can use a hand to do it. And if I tap and move it around, it moves that. And if I want to rotate it, I think now... It's been a while since I have rotated in this way. Let me see. Ooh, how do I rotate? I can't, there we go. If you hold Option and Command on a Mac, or it's probably Alt and what's the Control on a PC, I think it's something like that. Anyway, Alt and something. Anyway, as long as you get this picture, play around with the modify keys until you get this, and then you can rotate as well. And that is quite a useful. Uh, well, actually, never mind useful. It's a very important feature uh, for a lot of this program, which you'll get to in a little bit later on. If you want to reset the view, press this. This button here that says Reset View, funnily enough. Now, uh, one thing I will say is that on the on the right, with all these tools, um, you may see only a few of these. And the reason why is that um, a lot of them are hidden by default. And the only way you get to them is by holding... Uh, by clicking it for a long period and then rather like this a little menu pops down with other functions and then you just select what one you want. This little triangle here indicates that it has a little menu hidden behind the symbol view but if you want them all visible you can go to Harmony Preferences and in the general tab click Flat Tool Toolbar which as it says here requires a relaunch more than my job's worth to show you immediately. I've got to wait for a whole relaunch before I show you my wares or something. Anyway, so um, you may only see like up to here of uh, some of these functions. You may not see the others. But in order to, to sort of shuffle things around, change what's displayed, if you right click the toolbar and press customize, it'll give you lots of different tools that are available to you as well as the toolbar elements that you already have and if you want to get rid of one you can press this and if you want to get one over here you press this and you can move them up and down by pressing this several times come on there we go and down and stuff you can reorder them like that um, at the moment I've got the tools selected as follows because these are the things that I tend to use the most with some of them I just want to have on standby like morphing I've yet to really use very much but you know I like to have it available so I remember it's there if I if I need to possibly use it but the rest of them are as follows and um, what I'll do is I'll just go through the tools uh, by and large and we'll get an idea of what's going on now first of all um, we need to create a layer I need to create a drawing layer. So I can press this button, which says add drawing layer, press it, 
and the ad drawing layer dialog box appears and it shall be called drawing. But I don't want to call it drawing, I want to call it what I'm about to draw. So I'm going to draw a pussums, which is a little cat, a pussy cat, a pussums. And uh, I'm going to draw a pussums uh, using a brush tool. Now, here is the pussums. There. A pussums. And there's its feet. And there we go. Isn't she cute? Actually, it's a he. It's a non-gender specific pussums with an antenna. And um, I've now drawn the pussums. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I can manipulate this particular drawing using, uh, I've just used the brush tool. And as you'll notice, I've got lots of different options here. I can make it bigger, smaller, can change the smoothing on the brush. So for example, if I do that, uh, it doesn't smooth it as much as if I do this. See how it sort of tried to figure out. It's a bit more obvious. If I do something a bit more subtle, it really doesn't want, doesn't want those little wobbles. It tries to iron them out. So if I drew a straight line, it really tries to sort of get rid of that, which is handy if you want to do a sort of a quick, nice flick uh, of a character's sort of chin or something or whatever. And that's quite handy. Let's get rid of all of these. Um, let's go back to the uh, brush tool. Uh, let's change the smoothing to that kind of default. And if you want to change the parameters of any of these particular brushes, you can go to that button and then you can fiddle around with all the different bits and pieces like saying the maximum size of the brush, the minimum size of the brush, the roundness of the brush, the angle of the brush, all that sort of stuff. Uh, hardness of the brush. So if I shrink that down, oh, I can't. What's the matter? Okay, is it something to do with, oh, it's because it's a solid vector. That's the reason. If I had a paper texture added, uh, it won't allow me to do it. Let's go with this one, textured brush. And then if I change the hardness of a textured brush, I can sort of, you can see what's happening here. It can change the texture of the brush. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this. This is another tutorial for another time, but you get the idea. This one allows you to paint behind an object. This one allows you to repaint the color of an object. This one allows you to flatten it and create the color, all sorts of fun things. I'm not gonna get bogged down into that. I'm just gonna concentrate on drawing and just showing you the basics. So, like I said, I was gonna do before. There we go. So here's a Pussums and I'm going to color it in using the paint bucket tool and it's gonna be a green Pussums. Now, why won't it color in? Come on, come on, Pussums. If I select close large gap, you'll notice the, color, the number here jumps up. I can increase it to a number of 10, but I still think that probably is a bit too big. Oh, hang on, it's having a think. Having a think, are we gonna get anywhere? <laughs> the reason being, this gap is probably too large. Now, I have two choices here. I can either paint um, a little fleck like that, or I can close the gap using a stroke. Uh, and not having a stroke, I mean actually closing a stroke. Now, this tool is the stroke tool. And if I press that, uh, and then allow me to see strokes as well using the show strokes tool. Now, I, th I can't remember. Let me just check for you if there's the show strokes. No. So no show strokes on this toolbar, although you can paint with a stroke, but there is a stro show strokes, God blimey, a show strokes button on this particular toolbar, which you can enable, and this has different sets of functions as well. Every toolbar has its own little set of yes and no um, elements, I suppose. And this one shows strokes. This is part of the camera toolbar. If you right click, it's the camera view toolbar and you can customize that. Um, let me see. So 
I'm showing the strokes and this shows invisible strokes as well which I'm about to paint. So I'm just about to paint an invisible stroke there. Now this little blue line you won't see so it's a completely invisible little thing but it does allow me to paint green possums. We should do. Come on. Come on, you're so close, there we go. And you'll notice that that line is very, very sharp because that's the line I drew. It's a very, very sharp line. But I can change that using, see how effortlessly I go from one subject to another, the contour editor tool, which is the white one. And this allows me to do things like this to any stroke. So if I want a fat line, thin line, I can just move the stroke in and out. And for extra fiddliness, I can select I can sort of uh, lasso or marquee select a nodule, node, whatever they're called, and then be able to move that bit around and move the levers of that around as well. And if I want to sort of break apart a join, I can press Option on Mac or Alt, I think, on uh, Windows, and I can do things like that. Now, that gives me a little bit more control over the finished art and I can fiddle about and I can change it. So let's say I want this Pussums to animate. I'm going to get straight in there. I'm not going to mess about. Oh no, 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 no. Pussums be moving. Now, you'll notice that on frame one there's Pussums. On frame two there's no Pussums. Pussums be gone. Well, what I'll do is I'll say on frame 50, let's say, right click frame 50 and say extend exposure. And what that does is it says, I want this drawing to be shown all the way through to frame 50. Now, I'm going to set, because this sort of animation is going to be, uh, what, what do they call it, stop motion-y kind of uh, puppet based. You know, this isn't all the animation you can do. Believe me, you can actually animate conventionally like a normal Disney animator. But for the example shown, I want to show you how this works. So, the drawing is there, the keyframe is on top of that. So this shows you where the drawing is going to be. Now, I won't explain it just yet. I'll just give me a little bit more time and then I will show you exactly what I'm doing. So let's say keyframe one is there and then using this tool called the transform tool. Yes, I was right. If you select that and have animate selected, it's this sort of magenta box. If I deselect animate, it's a red box, um, which means that if I move, say if I go to frame 20 and I move that around without animate turned on, that affects the last, it affects all keyframes relative. So uh, for example, I don't know, let's say on frame 10, I do have animate on and I move that pussums over there and then I turn animate off on frame wherever we are now 29 and I move it over there it affects both positions because they are relative when you move things without the animate tool on. Let's undo that. So it's a kind of like a sort of animated anchor point if you like um, which is handy if you want to sort of realign things and you say oh, that's not quite right but most of the time it's good for when you're first creating a puppet or character and you want to get things just right at the very very beginning and then you tend to have animate on at all times afterwards but let's get rid of that and let's say um, I want to by the way these are <laughs> I'm whizzing ahead sorry this is insert keyframe which does what it says, you insert a keyframe. You don't have to. Um, if you have animate on and you just move it a bit, it automatically creates a keyframe. Keyframe plus, keyframe minus, that should be fairly clear. And uh, one thing I will mention before I carry on is that in preferences, I have stop motion keyframe set. Now I don't think this is turned on by default, but I have this turned on because I don't want the computer to fill in the gaps of movement for me until I say so, because it's very confusing. If I turn, oops, let me show you what I mean. If I turn stop motion keyframes off and I go to frame 20 and I move it there, now at the moment, I think it's a re relaunch thing, let me just check that. Uh, maybe not. Oh, no, that's right. And then if I do that, 
yeah, there we go. So, by default, when you turn on the, uh, the app and you start using it, and I'd moved it from this point to this point, the computer has worked out the in-between parts, which you may well want to do at a later stage, but when you're sort of constructing the movement, it's quite confusing to suddenly have these extra points automatically added in for you. You, see, you sort of think, oh, where am I now? So it's much better, I think, to have stop motion keyframes on. Now you notice there I press these. These toggle the current uh, keyframe function. So if I wanted to make that a, a motion keyframe, you select that. And if I wanted to make a stop motion keyframe, I select that. And that way it clicks from one position to another without any filling in, you see. And that's how I like it at the beginning. If I then am feeling comfortable, I will then say, okay, it's a stop motion keyframe, which you can do in between them as well. You see like that? There. Now let's turn on stop motion keyframes again. So it's just a little housekeeping there, but it's important to remember because a lot of the time that foxes a lot of people thinking, why is this thing moving around? I never told it to do this. Anyway, let's get rid of all of this. By the way, undo. Wait a minute. Undo. Now, if I had just said delete, it actually deletes the picture as well, and that's not what I wanted. I just wanted to delete the uh, drawing. Now, if I select it using this, it might delete just the keyframe. No, okay, so it really is just... Uh... Oh, no, hang on, wait a minute. No, no, okay. These, uh, incidentally, select what you want to select. So this selects the drawing and the keyframe. So if I was selecting that and moving that around, you notice I've just picked up a drawing and moved it around. Whoops. Um, there you are, you see. And do that a few times. Whereas if I select that, I only select the keyframe. I'm not selecting the drawing. Again, this won't make quite much sense until I explain it in a little bit, but let's just go through it. Sorry, I'm really racing ahead. Right. Frame one, frame 10. Okay, so frame one, let's start with Pussums at about that stage. By the way, actually as well, I'll move that pivot point. So you see the pivot point there, drawing pivot. I'm just going to move that to the base of the character there and that way I can do a bit of squash and stretch and it's coming from that pivot point there you see okay so frame one let's say I don't know, it's like that then frame pff, then frame pff, that's how you pronounce it in in all easy frame pff, there you go like that so boink and then frame wink it's like that um uh, might even raise it up a bit actually on frame Greek. On frame 10, I'm gonna rotate uh, actually on frame Greek I might actually rotate it a bit. There we go. So it's a, it's starting its journey. And then I need to do that now. So I'm trying to get the idea that this thing, this pussums, is bouncing onto the right hand side of the screen. Now in Flash or in other programs, if you were wanting to stretch this character, you would have to do a bizarre combination of make it bigger, shearing and shearing and doing all sorts of ugly things, and it's not terribly helpful. And if you want to get it over there, it, it distorts it in a really ugly way, it makes it look peculiar. What you want is this kind of, you know, you want it to. Uh, scale in this direction. So what you can do is rotate the scene and then the bounding box is level with the character itself. So then if I select it again, I'll just shear it back. There we go. So that's a bit less distorted in ugly ways. And I can pull it and push it there and it's in line with the character now. So it looks kind of right. Let's just uh, reset the, the view. There we go. Now, one thing I might try as well, no, I won't do it yet. Okay, so we've got our bounce, and then I'm going to rotate that. I'm going to select that, move it over. This is a world-class piece of animation, by the way. Milk Carl would just be wanting my autograph with this, this masterwork. 
The fact that the character size changes like mad, even if it is uh, smearing, is hilarious. Right, okay, pussums. Now, over you go. Come back like that. Pull, pull. Do doink. Play back. I'm uh, pressing the play button, which um, I think by default is space or enter, I can't remember, but I've relocated to something else. But you can always press that if you want to, and then go back to the beginning and press play. But um, yeah, boink. It's a world class piece of animation, I have to say. And then just select that, bump, bump, bump. Incidentally, when you're using the transform tool, it's not like the previous tool here where if I were to select it, I'd be grabbing little bits and pieces of it. It's, well, I'll show you now, actually. This, there are sort of two layers when you work with, isn't that wonderful? Look at that. Disney. Disney quality. Brilliant. Now, there are two layers you're sort of working with at all times with this program. There's the drawing layer, and there's the kind of, the, the thing that's actually on the drawing. And then there's sub-layers of that, but we won't go into that. But imagine, if you will, that this whole layer is a sheet of glass. And onto that sheet of glass, you put a piece of acetate. In fact, I'm going to draw a square of acetate. So this is our cell, if you like. Yeah, there's our cell. Now, you'll notice that when I moved the, um, when I transformed the thing, it's moving the drawing on that glass layer. So I'm not actually moving the drawing itself, I'm moving the, the layer. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's move the drawing itself. Yeah, so now I've got Pussums over on this side. So it's all relative to where the keyframes go. Now this is important to, to notice that you are moving the piece of glass, you are moving the entire layer around, you're not moving the individual bits. The individual bits can be moved, but of course they then will affect all the times that that particular drawing is used. Do you see what I mean? So can be a bit tricky to get your head around the initial times because Flash doesn't quite work in quite that way. Uh, you certainly don't have um, keyframes and drawings in quite the same use. So once you get your head around it, it's an incredibly useful and powerful way of doing things. But the initial times are like, what on earth? Plus, you at later stages have something called a peg, which separates the drawing and the peg information, if you like, out even more, which actually makes life more easy to understand and use. And for some functions, you have to do it this way, like deformers, you have to have it as a hierarchy of peg and drawing. But for the most part, you know, certainly if you're just doing normal conventional drawn animation, you probably won't need to worry about pegs, you'll just do it in this way. Okay, so if I were to select all these and make them into uh, motion layers, you'll notice that now it fills in the gaps, creating this wonderful piece of animation. Isn't it great? Now, and then you can be an animator and you can earn tons of money. Excuse me while I take some water. Now, that's Pussums. And we've covered the basics of how that can work. Now, one other thing, I will, actually one other thing I will cover is multiple drawings, which will clarify this situation, I think, hopefully, even a bit more. Let's just make these into uh, stop motion drawings. Now, let's create a new drawing. Boom. My gosh, where's Pussums gone? Where's all the animation gone? Well, the animation's still there. I just haven't got a visible image that the animation is showing, but I'll show you what I mean. Let's draw a red number two, or two. Gosh, that hurts the eyes, let's do it in blue. <laughs> and let's not do a number two, let's do something else. Let's do, uh, I don't know, Pussums two. Yeah, okay, so uh, Pussums two, there you go. 
Pussums two. And let's make it a cyclops. They are Pussums two, like a flower. And it has a beard. Right. Pussums two. Pussums one, Pussums two, Pussums one, Pussums two. Piece of acetate as well, just so that you get an idea of what's going on. See that? Where I translated stays because the animation hasn't changed. All that's changed is the sort of drawing that's being interpreted. I can go back, I can actually put the old drawing using a hotkey, I can flick between the two. So if I wanted that there, like that, see? And these lines depict different drawings. Now on um, Harmony 15, they've got a new feature, which if I press this, it'll show you let me just make this a bit bigger. It'll show you thumbnails of what picture is where. And these little dots represent where the picture is using the translate tool. So this is a little bit easier to understand. The four, I believe, means how many exposures that the drawing has. So if I move the drawing back... Actually, that's interesting. Yeah. Now, if I wanted to just draw... I'll speak properly in a minute. Not Martian. If I wanted to move the drawing... I can't speak to that. If I want to draw, if I want to move the drawing layer back, then I can select the drawing, the exposures only mode, and just move that back. So the keyframe is remains, but the drawings move underneath it, if you like. So, and you notice the three now instead of the four, and it will go up if I move it this way, and it go down if I move it that way. That's how many exposures that this particular drawing has. Um, if I do that, of course, it suddenly said that you want to make this drawing all over to that side. So you, what would be the way to move that boundary is to move drawing number two around. This little number here depicts what the drawing number is. Now the drawing number can be changed in the X sheet only. Um, and you can change the drawing number to anything. You can make it a word, uh, a name, uh, a series of numbers, hexadecimal barcode if you want it to be. And sometimes it is actually useful to have um, drawing mouth open or something like that. Or you know, if you, it's, it's particularly useful for lip sync or positions of a body part in you know. Uh, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, all that sort of thing, if you need to label it that precisely. But I would say the only really strong labelling that you need to do is lip sync mouths and layer names. But beyond that, it's not really that worth it, really, on the whole. Um, but yes, so Pussums isn't that wonderful. It's not at all like some bizarre Czechoslovakian animation from 1988. So, we've got our layer with pussums. By the way, I'm just going to shrink that back down again using the hourglass there. Now, just going to have a little burp. <coughs> Pardon me, thank you very much. Now, I'm going to do another drawing. I'm just going to hide that layer, by the way. The little eyes there, if you press that, it hides and shows that. And the lock locks it, funnily enough. Now, I'm going to do a little bit more conventional animation this time. And I'm going to call this Lil French Dog. Lil French Dog. And I'm going to draw using the pencil tool this time. A Lil French Dog. Um, let's do it like that. And I'm just going to draw Lil French Dog. Lil French Dog. Lil French. Your French dog. Yeah, little French dog. Now, <laughs> now, there are several reasons why I wanted to try it out with the pencil tool, but I'll go into those in a little bit. Now, uh, I'm going to probably animate this in a slightly different way this time. So, um, I'm going to. Oh, first of all, that drawing there. I'm just going to move that back. And you'll notice that it creates an exposure from that frame to that frame. If you don't want that, you can just select or over and delete. And then we've only got the exposure on that frame. If I can move it there, move it back, it will create another set of exposures and I'll just get rid of it. Incidentally as well, if I 
delete that. I haven't actually deleted the drawing. Let's go back here and have a look. Here is the library view. The reason I hid it away is because it's another little bit you're already dominated by lots of information at the moment anyway. But here is the library view and depending on what layer I'm selecting, you'll notice here um, it shows you all the drawings pertainable to that layer. And if I want to select a different drawing, I can do If I just select that layer to show you, and I'm showing that, if I want to change what this bit is, let me just move, open that up, I just move that over, it's able to change it. And if I had several different Pussumses, or Pussum mouths, or whatever, they would all be here as one long selectable line. You see? Now, Little French Dog, I've got a similar thing. Now you notice at the back here, but there are two positions. So if I click it over, Little French Dog back. No drawing is destroyed. So if I create a new drawing, if I go over here and create a new drawing, it automatically creates it as two, and I can make Little French Dog cross Little French Dog. Sacre bleu, I am badly drawn, sacre bleu. Apologies to any French people in the audience today. That is a dog. Um, in every sense of the word. That's it. But um, yeah, the French dog, very unhappy. Um, but you notice that drawing there, if I deleted that, is still within the memory, see? The only way I can delete a drawing permanently or by, you know, it's by uh, going to the X sheet and you have to delete a drawing there. You actually have to go into a sub menu and delete it. I'm not going to show you that here, but that is where you go. Um, so if you imagine drawings as a sort of, as a stack of, of wipe clean etcher sketches and um, you perhaps want to retain the number and you might want to retain the pivot information and all that sort of stuff, it's much better to just do that. Uh, select the drawing and then just press delete rather than delete the image here because you're not actually deleting the image at all. You're deleting the drawing on the image. So if I make happy French dog, yeah, I don't know why it looks like a sort of banana, but there we go. Um, happy French, oh, I've done his lines, there we are. Happy French dog. Um, you'll notice that that now takes place of drawing two because I, I really had deleted it and I selected bits of it and deleted it. So it's only when you delete things here that things don't really delete. That makes sense. Again, practice makes perfect on this. If you're unsure of any particular area of this tutorial, it's worth just faffing about and having a go and playing with it. Once you get the hang of it, it makes it becomes second nature. Um, Anyway, little French dog, happy, just normal, happy, normal. Now, I'm going to get rid of the happy one and just stick with the normal one. And I'm going to extend the exposure to 50 frames. Doesn't really matter how many. By the way, this thing, you, this is the length of the entire project and you can make it bigger, smaller, whatever. And this little triangle here shows you what you're currently playing. So if you do a loop, say, and you play that, it'll loop up to frame 50, okay? So let's turn that off again. So when I connect it up to there, then it's it just moves with the little red thing. There's also a little section here, if I can just grab it, which also does the loopy thing. If you want to loop just that area, there you go. That's quite handy as well, if you want to see a piece of animation over and over again, automatically. Anyway, now, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm going to create a peg for it and it automatically once you say create a peg says little french dog p that's the name of the dog little french dog name of p uh p p and um what i'm going to do for the purposes of this tutorial is the following i'm going to double click the drawing layer and i'm going to say use the embedded pivot of the parent peg and turn off animate using animation tools. The previous one I used to animate the drawing using animation tools. What I want to be able to do is to select this 
and you'll notice when I move it around, it's created a peg uh, position, a keyframe, on the peg layer, not here. Now, had I not done what I did, let's, let's undo several stages. Uh, let's go into that and put it back as it was. So it was don't use, no, don't use embedded pivot and thing. Um, then I move it around. Oops, <laughs> come on, there we go. So if I just sort of selected it using the transform tool and I selected that, it would create a peg, uh, so a, a, stop, a, a motion peg, no, what am I trying to say? A keyframe, heaven's sake, my brain. A keyframe on the drawing layer, which I don't want for this purpose of this tutorial. I want to do, uh, no, not that one. Double click that, turn that off, and turn that on. Because I want the, I want the pivot to be on the peg layer, which I'll go on to in a minute. So I want the pivot to be this, and this is controlled by the peg layer. Whoops. And I want the animation to only appear, the animation of translation and moving and bending around on the peg layer. And there's a reason for this. Um, firstly, it's easier on the eye. So you can tell now which are the drawings and which are the pegs, and you can easily move them around by, they're just sort of separate. So that helps uh, get your head around which is which. And also, if you notice, when I'm moving the pegs around, this goes yellow, and when I'm moving the drawings around, it goes pink. So it's kind of handy to, again, have that level of separation just mentally. The other reason is deformations, i.e., where you have a sort of bone in the character and you're able to move it around will only work if you have this kind of structure set up. If you do uh, deformations in this way, they behave in a really peculiar way. So you have to have it set up in this way. Now I'm gonna add a deformation to this. So let us say that for a start, we want the pivot to be there. Now you would think, wouldn't you, that set up a different pivot, you would go to this one. Oh, well, the pivot tool's there. I'm going to move it over there. Now, in this instance, that works. However, when you use deformations, you'll have to alter the pivots in a different way. And also, um, pivots, they kind of behave differently on pegs than they do on a drawing layer. On a peg layer, there's only one pivot. On drawing layer... Uh, layers there's multiple pivots that you can change depending on what the drawing is displayed but again we'll go on to that in another tutorial it's blah 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 it's not worth you worrying about at this stage so we've got our thing and i'm going to create a deformation this here is the deformation toolbar and i'm going to create one so i go to the sort of tools thing and i want essentially a spine of this character to come up now the default, when you create any kind of uh, sort of bone structure with uh, deformations, is I suppose I think they do just call them bones, a bone deformer, and you go tap, 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 and that creates your bones. And then this one, if I move this little dot around, changes the severity of the kink in the bone. Le kinky. Now if I go to the transform tool, you'll notice it turns green and if I move him around that's okay no nothing that interesting about him so far but then if I move this oh sniff 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 I am a little French dog sniff 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 now I can make his have a huge headache or a little weeny little mouse now Beyond a certain point, it does start to sort of deform a bit too strongly and you get ugliness like that. But within reason, you can deform and distort and do all sorts of little sniff, sniff, sniff. <laughs> My God. Um, you can do all sorts of fun things like that. And if I wanted to, I can just make him go over here and move him over there. And then you've got essentially a piece of animation there. Look. Now that didn't take very long at all. Um, to deselect it, you press anywhere other than the thing you want to animate. So click, 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 and then you press that, and then it sort of 
deselects the defamation. If you want to select it, you select the thing you want to uh, animate and press it, and it, then it shows you the defamations. If you want to edit it, you have the thing selected and you go to that, and then you're able to edit the most basic version. So say, for example, I wanted another, I wanted tap, and then it creates another section. I can tap everywhere I like, but I'm not going to undo, 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 undo. Back to that, you've now got an extra level. So I now can do this sort of weird snake dog thing. Let's see if I can, yeah, you see? Now the problem is that this set of deformers is a bit abrupt for the sort of thing that I'm now asking it to do. A bone deformation for that kind of thing is not on because it's asking way too much of what this particular deformation could do. Pardon me, can do. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of the deformation by selecting the deformation layer and pressing minus, and then it'll delete the whole thing. Well done, Ollie. Yeah, okay, that's not the best way to do it. Okay, <laughs> let's get rid of it somehow. Come on, delete. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to go into the node view here, bear with me. Don't worry about this, this is... Have you ever seen, if you've seen Wreck-It Ralph and where he goes into the cold, the secret part of the game, that's what this is. So, you know, the Konami code will only take you so far, um, but it won't tell you how to operate this, so don't worry too much. This is another world, another tutorial, whatever. This is just an overview, remember. I'm just going to select the defamation and delete it, like Vanellope von Schweetz. There you are. See a little crackly bit in the corner. Right, so let's create another defamation by selecting little pooch, little French dog. And this time I'm going to select the rigging tool, and this time I'm going to select the curve, either do it this way, either select the curve mode here, and you can create a new set of curves by doing this. Or, which I tend to do, have it on this sort of auto select mode. And then you drag each point like that. This one is a little bit trickier to get your head around initially because you think, oh, just tap, tap, tap. But it's not, it doesn't quite work that way. The pulling action dictates, first of all, it dictates that it's a curve mode. Uh, bone instead of this kind of bone. If you, whoops, if you, uh, come on, if you drag it, it says, oh, okay, that's the type of bone you'll want to get. And this is a, what's known as a curve uh, deformer. So if I select it and then I deform it, it's able to do these more curvy kind of whirly girly sort of things. There you see, you've got a subtler change in in the character and I use curve deformers pretty much all the time for a lot of a lot of characters because it just gives you that extra flexibility for cartoony characters um yeah so you can do all sorts of funny things like that you see um if I to put him back to how he was yeah I see boom 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 Let's get rid of this in the secret part of the game, the cold. Tower Bill, I'm going out. You're in charge until I get back. Right. Okay. Uh, reliving happy memories. Right, okay. So, we've got our um, lovely French dog. And for the third deformation curve, I'm going to select again that. And this time I'm gonna, you, I think you do have to select um, this on here. I don't think it automatically creates this. This is what's known as an envelope curve. And the first part you do in the same way you do a curve, but you don't do it inside the character. You do it sort of around the perimeter. So you do this kind of thing. And it does take a while to get used to, believe me. But uh, once you get the hang of where the curve's gonna go, and then for the final bit, if you want to sort of join them together, now which one is it? I think you press Alt or Option and tap it once. Mm. Hang on, I never remember how to do this, sorry. Let me try it. Is it that one? No, I'll get it eventually, hang on. Let's assume that these are joined together. For the purposes of this tutorial, it's not that important, but let's assume it is. Right, if I now transform this, it allows me to push, smush 
things around. Now, it tends to work better when the thing I'm smushing around isn't too detailed and there are not too many points. Because the more points you have, the more deliberate the changes are between them. So it doesn't tend to work. So let me try another tack with this. Let me go into the there, get rid of that. Let's try again. Um, let's try. Duh, duh. This time I'm going to really make it quite close, to, in fact, on top of the line and do as few. I'm going to option move that. That way I, I can break the curve like that. What I want to try and do. What um, defamation. Blah, blah, what. Uh, what they call them, envelope defamations are best for a flat, undetailed objects. Let's select that now. The closer it is to the line, the better. Now ignore all this bit because anything that sort of, it's having to get its information from one place to another and it just doesn't like it. It, it can just about do some of it, but it's not very good. However, things within reason, it can do very well. So you have to be, you have to box quite clever with a tool like this because um, it can do some things and it can't do others. Um, but the thing it can do is allow you to animate certain bits and pieces and essentially morph them around. So say, for example, you've got this at frame one and you've got this at frame 10 and you want to make him sniff. Like that, and you want to make his whole end of his nose bigger, you can do that. Yeah, that's your animation. Now, the as I say, I wouldn't how I would use this is that I would separate the dog's different pieces so he's his bits and pieces were on a, a total set of layers of their own, and then you would just animate them separately, which would look better anyway. And you probably would want to because you would want to have the nose and the the, sorry, the mouth and the eyes separate anyway to do that animation. So this gives you an extra sort of dimension to pull very delicately the um, character around, but I wouldn't do it with anything patterned or textured because it just tends to make it look a bit weird, particularly like that. That just does not work well at all. But as a flat object, uh, in a way where you want to make the character look as if they're sort of turning 360 degrees you can do that just by moving the various elements around imagine he hasn't got any detail here in fact i can do better than just imagining it i can delete it if i get rid of that 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 oops that let's go to the drawing layer actually and then i can see it without any kind of ugliness attached the drawing layer only shows you the drawing it doesn't show you any deformations doesn't show you anything attached to the drawing unless you sort of ask it to with the with the uh, light bulb or yeah the light bulb <clears throat> it just shows you the drawing like a piece of paper with no manipulations at all so i'm gonna get rid of that 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 the beret <coughs> and i'm just gonna erase that so we're just left with the outline here and then i'll show you so See that? So now you really wouldn't know. There's no weirdness going on there. And then if I sort of move it so that he kind of looks more like um, he would do if he was front on. Imagine if he was made of different pieces all layered on top of each other. So imagine if his um, nose was separate and floating above. And I will cover that in another tutorial. Um, you are able to get a kind of effect whereby it looks as if he is turning around. So let's say for these two positions, I do um, a, a motion keyframe. It's created that you just can't see it all there, and it'll do that. And if I turn, if I turn off deformations, so you can't see them. Imagine that part is his nose. And in fact, I think just to clarify my meaning, I'm just going to create a nose layer. And I'm going to draw a little nose, a little French dog nose in red. 
There you go, like that. And make the pivot point in the center, just because it'd be a bit easier for me to understand. Come on, there we go. And I'm gonna move that to, oh, just increase the exposure. There we go. Um, then I'm gonna move that to there. There we go. Now, if I create that, I turn that off so you can see. See what I mean? It gives the impression, slightly badly, that um, hang on, that he's moving his look. It'll be even clearer again if I change his eyes. If I create a new eye, a uh, layer called eyes, and then I create, uh, just do a bit of blob of blue there. There we go. Uh, extend the exposure to that bit. Um, change the pivot so it's between the eyes like that. And then I select that, and then I select that. Move them over here so it's a little bit like that. And then just change it so it makes it like that. So to me, it gives a kind of impression that he is looking that way. Now, it's incredibly ugly, this, at the moment. So what you've got to do is box clever <clears throat> with how and where you put your deform points. Because if you have to do this sort of thing, you have to give the impression that this is ultra smooth um, and know which bits translate to which bit. I mean, that, for example, really does need to come down there. That needs to go up there. That needs to be moved to there. And, of course, that little cheek bit would probably be its own little section as well, like the eyes and the nose, so it wouldn't be part of the head. So if you get my meaning, you know what I mean? This would be a lot neater. But you get the idea, I hope, that this is a way for you to do some very complicated ideas. This is the, this is the technique. Uh, and this technique is used in Mickey Mouse cartoons, it's used in uh, all sorts of stuff at the moment. Uh, Rapunzel, or Tangled as they call it, um, it's used in all sorts of things to get a much more dynamic approach to the animation. Um, and it's quite impressive how they can do it. So it gives you an idea. Now, what else? I can fill little French dog um, with a nice colour. Let's make him green. So that gives you an even, even clearer idea of what's going on there. And then, um, what else can I show off? Um, here's the unpaint tool. So you can paint only unpainted. You can paint... Uh. Yeah, that one is like a sort of paint bucket fill for erasing. So if you want to erase something, whoops. If you want to erase something, you can just sort of un unpaint something like that. And this one is paint unpainted areas. So this will only paint somewhere that hasn't got any color on it. So if I wanted to paint blue there, I can't do it because it's already got paint on it. But, you know, there we go. Come on, select that. I can also move that around as well if I want to, but I won't. Incidentally, if you're wondering why it sort of isn't quite lining up with how it is appearing there, it's because the deformation is doing that. If we went to the drawing layer and did it, then that's correct. Because as I said before, the drawing layer is not affected by deformations, whereas the camera layer is. Uh, if I were to turn off the deformations here, then again, we're left with a clean image again. We can always turn it back on again. There we go. So there we go. Um, what else have we got here? Oh, there's, there's one other little thing that I want to demonstrate as well. Let's create a new drawing layer and we'll call it trees. Come on, close. And I'll turn all of this off. Actually, I'll group all these together, group selection, and then turn it off that way. Right, trees. I'm going to draw one tree in, I'm going to change the color of this, something a bit more friendly to the eyes, a rust color. Right, I'm going to draw one tree in a uh, brush tool. There we go, one tree with dark glasses on. Actually, no, 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 I won't do that. I'll do one tree with spectacles on. 
And so I'll call that brush tree. And another one, draw in pencil tree. In fact, that's not bad. What I'll continue, I'll, what I'll do with the brush tree is I'll just sort of do, hang on. Oh, Mr. Trick here. Right. So bear with me, please. Here's the brush tree. There you go. With a bush. There we go. That's a brush tree. And then the pencil tree, I'm going to do in a sort of dark green. And do the same sort of thing, but uh, as a pencil. So here's the pencil tree. Whoops, I could barely see it. Well, change the colour to sort of... Incidentally, that doesn't mean anything green. You can call it whatever you like and call it the brush tree. Because if I change the colour here, so if I did that and then I change it here, it changes the colour there, you see? Ooh. Which is quite handy if you, if you change your mind about um, what the character's colour should be at a later stage or you want to tint it or do all sorts of things. You can do all that by just supplementing a different palette and all the information of where the layers are is still there. You just change the type of colour that they are or the um, transparency. Um, let's, yeah, let's do just a cyan colour like that. Uh, it's the brush tool, a uh, pencil tool, and I'll do a tree with that. There we go. And make him have dark glasses on. Yeah. Now, on the face of it, these two don't look terribly different, do they? Now, this will only work on Harmony Premium, I'm afraid. Um, if you have any of the other Harmonies, then just stick to the brush tool. But Harmony Premium gives you the extra little something. Now, with the pencil tool, sorry, with the brush tool, if I select the brush tool, you'll notice that the way you can manipulate the edges is at the edges, the, the thickness of the brush. So if I select the contour editor tool and select that, if I pull at it, I give the brush tree a little growth here, a little, little sort of build up of toxins and I can shrink it down and I can get rid of it completely like that, um, do all sorts of things. Now the downside of this is, is that as an animation tool, if I wanted to animate the line, it can be a bit of a faff because I've got, I can't, there's nothing to get hold of here and I can't move that over because the other one won't come with it. It'll do that okay, but then you get this big thick bit and ugh, nightmare. What you wanna do for that's for this sort of thing is use the pencil tool. Now using the contour editor tool and I select whoops select the pencil tree tool for a start. You'll notice whoops yeah you'll notice that there's a central spine to this rather than the two orange bits either side. This middle bit is the bit you manipulate and then around which the meat of the line is produced. So, for example, if I move the line around, the line comes with it. Now, only in Harmony Premium can you get a thick, thin pencil line. So it's all the benefits and goodness and look of the thick and thin brush tool, but with the added animation help of the pencil tool. So, for example, things like that, or like that or all sorts of stuff. And you can change using the pencil editor tool. You can change the thickness and thinness either side or pressing shift, is it? Yes, you can make it thick and thin there. If you want to add points, you can do that and make them thick and thin. It's all good. And then you can still manipulate the line afterwards. There you see? So, that really does give you much, much more, sorry, many more options, especially when you're wanting to create a piece of animation. So if, say, for example, you've got that uh, as, your ex uh, blah, blah, as your exposure, and then say on frame five, you wanted to sort of create another frame, you can create a new frame using the duplicate drawing tool, press that, you've got another picture, and then you select and move it a bit, and then you've got two frames there, effortlessly created. There's only a tiny little bit of in-betweening. 
um, and you can just sort of move and manipulate and twiddle to your heart's content, which will give you, you know, a few extra minutes to sort of fiddle around. It's very good, this sort of uh, uh, technique for when you're fairing one movement to another and you just want a little bit of movement, just a little small amount to subtly move from one place to another. And you can still, if you want to, smooth the line a bit to give it a sense of vibration and, and energy um, so it doesn't look like some completely dead thing. If I just want to do that and just smooth it a tiny bit, then you've got the sense that this looks like a completely different drawing. I'll just select all of those, smooth a bit. Not quite the same. Let me just, oh come on, auto correct or auto save. Let's do that. So that gives you a lot more control. Let me just zoom in. Obviously you probably wouldn't draw quite like this. In fact, I can smooth just selecting the uh, the select tool and that selects the entire object, which would be probably more helpful in this instance, and then smooth that. Oops, not quite as much as that. You get the idea, anyway. Um, I've created two drawings and been able to manipulate one and that's a bit strong. I wonder if, can I change, if I select that, hmm. yeah. I'm able to create essentially a set of different drawings using a combination of the smooth tool and being able to move things around. It's a cheat. But in this game, you really do need as many cheats as you possibly can, because, you know, life's too short, honey. So I think that's enough. Um, you get the idea where this is going. Oh, there's one other thing. Well, another little thing I will mention as well. Um, with Harmony 15, you can now, whoops, whoopsie do. You can now manipulate brushes in a similar way to what I showed you with the pencil tool. If you go here, the center line editor makes this behave in a very similar way to the pencil tool. So I can now manipulate the line and move it around in a, sl in a similar way. Uh, to how I was able to do the pencil tool. The downside is, is that I can't, as far as I know, control the thick and thinness anywhere, though I could erase it if I wanted to. Oops, if I just wanted to erase bit of it. Just do that if I wanted to. Oops, there we go. Say I wanted to cut a bit out, there we are, that's nice, and then I can fiddle around and change it and smooth it and do all sorts of ugly things there. And then I still can move the thing around and do all that sort of stuff. So, that, you know, if that's your way of working, that is really handy. But um, I still prefer the pencil tool because it just gives me that extra level of, uh, of um, precision, I suppose. But there we go. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, sorry it was a bit rambly towards the end. It's because it's a crash course. And um, I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.